Welcome back everyone. Today I thought I would share a video of upgrading the radiator on your 2.2 converted L-series in this case. Um, just to let you know what I'm doing and we'll see if it actually works. So just a quick one before I get to the radios themselves. We find the water inlet pipe on the engine is pretty much in the same spot L-series to Liberty. Slightly different of course, different angle and whatnot, but the main difference in where they're located is obviously over this side on the L-series, your actual water inlet pipe comes out above your cam belt cover, which obviously when you go to a 2.2, bear with me for a sec, it comes out right at the base, dare I say it, underneath there. So that's the biggest difference as far as hose positioning goes. So if you bear with me for a sec and come over to the actual radiators and I'll let you know what I'm going to try and hopefully it works for you guys and me um, so what I've done was once I did the 2.2 conversion I had been running this radiator in an off-road vehicle that it was set up as so it's a twin core L series and it was it's it worked great i had two electric fans obviously the craig davies bolted on it and it worked wonders but as you can see it's 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 had its life it's well and truly over now and once i did the conversion in this new red car i just honestly put the same l series radiator the, the automatic factory one back in it just so i could get the thing on the road and running but i thought i'd show you it because this is basically what the hose setup was to get the water into the right positioning because obviously as i say on the normal lcs you'd literally just come up here and bend in and hey presto you'd be right so obviously we're going to make some changes now there's been a lot of talk about what to do you know there's been a few guys obviously get custom ones made up and there's probably no you know custom ones are great but you know obviously there's been a few things on the forum about you know if, if you get a leak on a three core in the middle you're gone so what i've decided to do is follow a bit of a hopefully trend that works and if it does that's great for all of us and that is to grab one of these off ebay which is from a nissan pulsar so i'll just duck down to the stats on here which i wrote down because there's no point in putting an ebay link up because we change next week so it's a pulsar n13 87 to 91 in this case it is a twin core and it's labeled on the ebay page as 36 millimeter hole diameter so that was the main reason i think a lot of the guys including me are going to try this one out now to be fair obviously running this old kit and cabertle for so long it was just bulletproof um so i'm sort of hoping that this will do the trick stepping into the pulsar obviously plastic end tanks on the thing which I'm not a big fan of, but it was basically a decision of plastic end tanks and having a non-restricted water flow system versus something that, something like this, where obviously piping water through this sort of apparatus is definitely restricting the water flow massively. So roughly, if you look at the, the numbers, these are measured basically off the engine so the l series is around about the 30 millimeter mark both in and out pipes and the liberty is about 38 so when you consider the the difference in volume between a 30 and a 38 diameter it'd probably be quite a large difference in airflow which you know if you are doing off-roading which is what this one's for makes a massive difference so as you can see you can even physically see that the the in and the out pipes are just yeah so much larger than the l series so obviously the main thing we have to concern ourselves with is remounting it. There's, I would assume that these aren't quite going to match up, which you wouldn't expect being off a different product. It's similarish in size, as you can see if I zoom out a little bit more. The original L series definitely is longer. Um, I believe height's basically the same. So I'm going to get this hopefully get this nissan one in so i'll take you on the journey and we'll see how it all pans out one other thing i just thought i'd mention too was i'm doing all of this in march 2022 where i could actually pick up the nissan one for 160 bucks on ebay and a new one whether it was l series or liberty didn't really matter started at around 230 so although it cost 
is not a massive difference. You know, it sounds silly that there's actually a bit of a savings if you do go to the Nissan one. Ironically though, after I bought this one, I noticed the same seller bumped the price up to near 200. So I don't know whether that's a demand thing or not, but we'll find out. Okay, so I've just turned these around to compare the bottom mountings. And obviously with this particular side lined up, scan over to here and that's about how far we are out so what's that 25 mil give or take so that's a good sign that it's not way out so now we'll just take the new one and see how it roughly it fits in there physically okay so just holding the camera down in the radiator mounting area now we've decided to leave this well the mount over on the battery side the passenger side in australia of course um, where it is and just re-drill another hole right beside the right hand side driver side one now you can actually if you sit the radiator in and you can actually use use the radiator while it's roughly in place to scratch a little mark in the grease muck that's already down there I've just popped a 13 mil hole in there for now which isn't big enough for the little rubber grommet but I've just cut the rubber grommet down so it will fit in and if it's all successful i'll come back later and do yeah just ream that hole out a bit bigger and use a proper grommet but for now i just want to make sure it goes in and fits and is going to work okay so i've got the radiator sitting in position in the new holes in the base so as we can see and this has been mentioned on i think one of the forums it is quite height at the top so I am gonna to have to do a little bit of modification to get it under there which is no big deal like I say it is the off-roader I'm still a bit dubious about whether this face here I, I can't see how it's ever gonna meet up to right outside there it just looks a little high unless you take the rubber grommets off and sit it a little bit lower if that's possible I may even look at doing that too uh, but just thought I'd see, let you guys know where I'm up to for now. The only other things of concern are obviously these tags aren't necessary at all, not the way it's mounted in this car anyway. And the height of the radiator cap concerns me a little at the moment. Um, when you sort of get down, well, it's a bit hard to judge, but I think it'll be fine. But just another thing to take into account. All right, so back again. So, after a slight modification, shall we say, with the angle grinder, which literally all the way across between my blue markers, probably be easy if I swing around from this side. Literally just remove that lip. Not focus. Literally just remove that lip and it actually sits up under there. It only goes under about a centimetre or so, maybe not even that, looking at it, but the actual gap and this is a twin core actually <laughs> looks larger than what I had with the twin core on the L series without those being pushed in any further so yeah so it's looking pretty good if you don't mind doing a little bit of modification that's the only catch there definitely couldn't get it in without some severe modification or maybe there's a different model but next I'll check to see if the radiator cap fits on Alright, I just thought I'd do a front view just to show you guys how close it is or isn't. I could take a little bit more out of this section if I wanted, um, because it's really just this ridge here that sits under this, what's left of this lip, so you obviously you can bring it forward, it's hitting that. If you flex it up a bit, it tucks under nicely, and then similar over on the right hand side. It's pretty close over here, but if I just lift it up a little, it tucks under nicely, so it's probably sitting just near this lip so so you do lose a bit of a gap there unless you really wanted to modify things but you've still got this rise here so you're really not going to get it any closer than that spot there as well um, so you definitely won't be able to use these original rubber mounts at all if I flex it back out again whoops obviously there's a few holes well, there's a couple of holes already mounted in there so it's quite possible we might be able to just drill through the front here somewhere to there or possibly if we really wanted to we could just drill straight through there into this one and have a nut there um, to make it a little bit more accessible too so I'll um, once again get back to this make sure it's going to fit under the bonnet first that'll help 
Okay, so this is my trial fit once again. No problem with the height regarding this or that, for that matter. Um, again, there's no way I can seem to get the radiator in any further than about here. It's just too tall. Um, however, where I've mounted it at the moment doesn't give me enough room tuck down in here for this hose to clear the cam belt cover. Now, when I do read one of the AU forum uh, posts, they said the same thing. They basically moved it as far um, to the left passenger side as possible to clear that cam belt cover. So I will do that. I still, um, lining it up in there, I still can't see that I have enough room to mount the Davies Craig fan. It's 50 mil. So even here to here, well, it probably won't lock in. It's just not... It's just not enough room, but to be fair, I was considering mounting the fans in front anyway. Now, this actually had the loop ball bar on as per all my previous videos, and I'm quite sure that the fan itself will fit down in that gap. I've just taken off this little bracket off the back side of the headlight assembly because it's not important. It's no, it does nothing mounts off it. And this steel bar down in here is actually part of the front bumper mount. Now I'm going to be putting a replacement bumper bull bar on instead of this anyway. So this has got to come off. So I'm going to take this off, take that support bracket off and see if I can put the fans up front. There's obviously a lot of conjecture about whether that's good or bad. But at the end of the day, um, you know, as long as it's got air pushing through or pulling through. I mean, to be fair, if it was mounted on the back, it is flush against the radiator. So it probably be, would be more efficient. And doing it the way I'm doing it, there is going to be... A little bit of a gap between the air conditioning core and the radiator but gee it's going to be so much easier to get to um, just need your two little plastic screws out for your front grill and then you'll be able to get to whatever mounts I put on it so well, I'm actually not sure why it hasn't been done more in the past maybe it is less way less efficient doing it that way but um, it'll certainly make working around the front of the engine a lot better as well. So that's the theory at the moment. So I'm going to remount this further over towards the battery to clear that cover and then have a look at how to mount it and then have a look and see what I can do with this fan or fans on the front. Alrighty, so trial fit with the replacement ball bar on and sure enough with the grill not there heaps of room heaps of room this side of probably about seven eight centimeters um i've measured it up in this thermal fan i've got sitting up here which i think is it's bigger than a 10 so i'm assuming it's a 12 inch one will definitely fit in there um if i want i can probably squeeze a little one in this side but um i'm not too worried as long as i've got one here and the twin core with the appropriate hoses we're doing okay. So now as far as the fitment goes, I'll try and get a bit of a visual here for you guys to see. So effectively, you can see that lower pipe is pretty much tucked up against the wiring loom. I've left it to make sure it's not going to impede it whatsoever, but you obviously still need to clear the cam cover. So you do have to come a long way right um, obviously with this particular radiator, you know, there's a couple of reference points there if you need to. And then again over this side, if it's the exact same radiator as this one, then obviously you can line up the marks with whatever. Um, so literally what I'm going to do is there's a couple of just small holes in here, which I've just marked with a pen there. And the same over this side, right near this. I'll probably remove this out for the air conditioning core support. And I'll just have to run some smaller nuts and bolts through there to hold it in place. Um, I'm not worried about rubber mounting it yet, but it, again, it's something I will look at once the whole thing's in and functioning. Because to be fair, if I end up running one or two fans at the front, I've literally got 
you know, not massive amounts of room. The tightest points there, obviously, which is probably only 335 mil. But I could actually lean the radiator out a little bit further if I chose to, and it would still clear that substantially. So that's just another thought for the future and put some rubber mounts in behind, in behind here. So, yeah, so, so far so good. A little bit of mucking around. So obviously I had to re-drill those two holes in the bottom. Um, and as I said, I just took it as far right as I could without removing that wiring loom or relocating it, which I didn't really want to do. Okay, so next step, I've obviously popped the holes in here and yonder to match the holes that are already in the front of the radiator panel. To be honest, I could re... I actually think I did re-drill one now that I think about it. Yeah, I did. I, I re-drilled this one at the front too. Um, but what I thought I'd show you is I've just done a rough fitment on the top radiator hose. Now, this is the original hose, but I cut about two centimetres or so off it, and I did actually reverse it. So this end with the two wire brackets was actually down on the engine side because it is really tight like that is just missing the power steering line by three or four mil and it, it's got a tiny little kink in the hose a little bit of restriction there but i don't have much choice unless i find another hose that has actually like an s-bend that's a bit tighter than this one but you'd also have to have the correct distance as well so that'll definitely clamp on okay but i've just got a little bit of restriction on that corner um which i'll just have to live with for now um now the bottom radiator hose i've got one on order so i won't go into what i'm doing there until i know it's going to work um now the other thing with front mounting the cooling fan is obviously there's nowhere on the actual air conditioning core to really mount it to so there, I, therefore, I have to mount to the chassis, uh, which will be here, and then probably down in this chassis section at the front here. Now, if you don't support this, it obviously, without those original bolts in, it just pushes back. So what I've done here is just grab some small, I think they're M8s, and they're only about 20 mil long, so the bolt head and the washer on the inside, and I'll put them in the original radiator holes, and literally their job is just to hold this in position, and the bolt head on the inside is not actually touching on the radiator. So therefore, especially this side, because it lines up right with the plastic tank and you wouldn't want that rubbing. So I've just mounted that so that this is secure. So that when I do mount the fan against this, or really against that bracket and there, it'll be pretty much mounting flush on this and it won't push this back. All right, so again, test fitting the new radiator. And I had a big, bit of a mix up with the hoses, so I think I've finally landed the one that's going to fit, which as you can see, if it will focus for you, 05-0197 gates, which ironically is a Toyota Land Cruiser. But if we just back the camera off a bit here, it's pretty much going to go over there and onto there. So this is as good as it's going to get. I don't know if it's actually going to clear the cam belt cover. Let's see. Actually, it'll push on, ironically enough. I might just end up putting... Yeah, it's going to work fine, but it, it might just rub there, so I might have to just put a little shroud over the hose to protect it by the look of it, because I'm. that's as far this side of as I could get the radiator without starting to undo wiring looms and aircon pipes, so... All right, so we'll fit the hoses up properly now and see how they actually go. Okay, so here's the conclusion, the Pulsar radiator. Now, to be fair, I've been a bit slack, and this is actually a few months later, because previously when I was fitting up the Pulsar radio, we were only a week or two away from going to Fraser Island, so this is actually probably a couple of months after we've got back. Um, so basically successful at the end of the day. So I'll start at the bottom I won't climb underneath and show you there because the previous videos show exactly how close it is to the cam belt cover. So what I've just done is I just strapped an extra little bit of slightly larger diameter radiator hose because it is rubbing just on the nut and bolt for the cam belt cover there as per the previous video you would have seen. So what I would probably recommend 
is to literally just probably angle grind that off completely that nut and bolt i mean you know there's enough there's, well assuming they all haven't fallen to bits like most of the l's but you've got enough nuts and bolts really you could you could take that one out angle grind it off and make sure it's you know not open and so forth there's probably other ways but for now that worked fine for me so i didn't move the radiator left or right any further it is as i said just rubbing but um it hasn't rubbed through that little bit of extra protection i've given it there so that's the bottom hose as per previous video now on the top one again no change obviously there is that restriction there which again i haven't bothered doing anything about yet it's 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 squished it out sideways a little and it's kinked it just slightly but as you can see it's quite a short run there to there so you could go looking through and to be fair i went through a lot of the radiator hose catalogs looking at basically what 17 18 19 mil um sorry what's that let's try that again 37 38 39 mil hoses they're listed in size order and you might be able to find something that was working a little bit better but for now it's not closing it enough that it's really restricting it greatly because obviously being pushed in slightly there it's actually pushed out sideways so although it has changed the shape and yeah it's probably restricted it slightly um it's doing the job so yeah as i say it's been in for three months now and done done a bunch of trips um with the mountings obviously yes i've just literally did use those holes as per my last markings just nut and bolt through and same over this side nut and bolt through i just loosened this one off so there's a little bit of flex in there so there is a little bit of room there to rubber mount it it's sitting on the rubber bungs at the bottom but i haven't rubber mounted it at the top yet so that's on the to-do list whether it ever gets done we'll find out um so that's that's that part of things now as far as the fans go um yes one front fan there's a bit more room than probably how it looks from here but it mounted in there fairly well i just had to put some spaces out in behind here between the chassis and the bolt and i just just nut and bolted it through and used nylock nuts so it's not going anywhere um and although it's a bit hard to see with the way the sun is yeah, I just did the same just in the center there as well. Bit of a big nut as an old spacer and so forth just to get it mounted right. So it's not perfect. I've got a bit of a gap in there. But like I said, we sort of had to get this done for Fraser. And it did the trick. But one good thing is on the inside, I was able to mount. So both these are 12 inches, I believe. I'll double check that though and yeah, put it up on the post later. But... I uh, was able to squeeze this one in, so I don't know how well you'll be able to see that, but I've got about four, five mil gap. Probably the closest point would be down in here. But the beauty is I was able to mount it in there, so literally, as I say, a little bit of handiwork to hold it in place and off course, and a little bit of custom mounting down the bottom, but the at the end of the day it is doable so basically for fraser um with the two fans running um it was a probably pretty cruisy run as far as sand goes in other words there wasn't a lot of really hard soft deep dry sand so it worked fine the temp never really got up at all i've got another temperature sensor mounted on the block which for now i just put right down the back corner because it's the only easy spot i could find to mount the sucker and the block temp over there which as you can expect is nowhere near the coolant or anything like that it never really got above sort of 73 80 degrees in that corner but at least it's a relative gauge to how the overall block is sitting so yeah overall happy with it um you do have to do a bit of mucking around obviously so i really you can't really push this side any further that way towards the battery because really that's going to give you an even shorter bend in this hose here so again i am running a two inch lift kit on this so it might vary depending on what you've done obviously i've chopped off these little brackets that were meant for the original nissan pulsar mounting but you want to be prepared to yeah do a bit of trimming along here i did not have to 
do any custom work on the bottom radiator support mount other than re-drilling the two holes for the bottom of the radiator to sit in. So that was part of what I didn't really want to go to the effort doing. And again, this is a twin core. So I'm actually pretty happy with how this has turned out. Um, as I say, I can still rubber mount that, get it a little bit better, potentially see if there's a slightly uh, better hose to suit that top. But as you would have seen if you watched the whole videos, compared to that little con concoction that was in the old car with the radiator, um, this is a heap better. So yeah, I definitely recommend it if you don't mind hands-on. I wouldn't do it on a show car, obviously. Trimming this off, I've just put a little bit of paint along the top to make it look at least a little bit neater. Um, but it certainly does the job okay, and it is a twin core. So I notice now that there's a few, a bit of bit of talk out there about the BRZ radiator. So it'd be interesting if someone does a similar video to mine on the BRZ because. Um, from what I've seen on eBay at the moment, the BRZ was only a single core too. So if they do a BRZ twin core and it mounts easier than this, then I would definitely go that way. Um, but considering the cost of this and so forth, uh, it was quite relatively cheap for what I, for my end result, which was, yeah, just to get a twin core in there. So yeah, if you've got any questions, chuck them in below and I'll, do my best to answer them and hopefully happy motoring and then at least this has probably helped you guys out to see whether it's worth doing what you want to do or not. Alrighty, see you later.